Welcome to Click Stuff, brought to you by Lucky Dice Cafe out of Huntsville, Alabama. Check them out at luckydicecafe.com. And now for your hosts, Daniel Powell, Jason Alvey, Alex Coos, and Tyler Spees. Hey everybody, welcome to Clickstoff today. This is your host Daniel Powell speaking. I uh, just want to let everyone know we are on a road trip. Uh, this is audio taken in my truck uh, with the air conditioner going because it's currently 86 degrees outside uh, and Jason's to my right. So if the audio isn't great, um, we apologize. We apologize. Um, we want something to talk about on our three and a half hour journey. So, um, I have to pay attention to driving. So Jason's running the phone for all of the uh, uh, questions and the figures and stuff. So, but Clickstuff is brought to you by TrollandToad.com, world's largest hero clicks retailer. Find hero clicks new and old on TrollandToad.com. Use coupon code Clickstuff for five percent off your hero clicks order. Merchant and pre-order items do not apply. If you like what you hear on Clickstoff today, check us out patreon.com forward slash clickstoff. Dollar and above gets entered into our monthly giveaways. Five dollars and above gets entered into our Patreon channel and Discord. So we uh, we got about three new uh, patrons this past week since our last episode. We appreciate y'all joining up and getting into the Discord server. Um, so, uh, of course, like I said, joining me today is, uh, is Jason Alvey. So, hello, hello. Um, so, we want to talk about slop. Uh, um, Slobby slop. So, you know, we're probably, but we'll do a full set review um, for Constructed coming up. And then we'll do our tier maker for everything. Um, but I think what we want to talk about today is pool or pass for all of the slop figures. Um, right. So, now of course, obviously, if it's the last figure in the booster... You don't have much choice. You don't have much of a choice, but if it's the first two, maybe three figures you get to look at in a booster, yeah. are you going to pull it or pass it? Yeah. If you haven't played this before, uh, you're only going to have four figures in a booster. The fifth place is taken by a sword. Uh, so you're gonna open this up. You're gonna get a sword. You're gonna keep the sword, and you're gonna pick a figure and pass. Is how the format is supposed to work. Right. Um, I, we have some ex hands-on experience with this. I have played uh, like six games worth of battle royals with this uh, at Gen Con. Uh, came in second in the 32-person uh, uh, month, pre-month one that they did there. Right. Uh, so we do have some experience with it. Daniel's played three games with it, I believe. Yeah, I played three games with it, and um, yeah, yeah. And, so. and with the caveat that uh, I am not a great VR player, so I like. All right, so let's talk about our first figure table. So. Number zero zero one in the set, cables. Well, I guess I also wanted to say before we get started, uh, the format is everybody regenerates, and everybody you play at top dial, and everyone you get to make a a sword bearer, right? Anybody can be a sword bearer, yes. Right. Yeah, that is correct. And when we say regenerate, when your figure dies on on your on your following turn. They come back in your starting area with no tokens. Right. So they're ready to go. Right, which is a big deal. Yes. A big deal. I think that affects the strategy of a normal Battle Royal quite a bit because you don't have to worry about uh, that you're losing figures. You don't have as many attackers. I mean, a lot. sometimes it's even better because you've got brand new figures that are untokened that can go... And top dial. And top dial. Uh, so you can probably be a lot more aggressive than you would normally be. Um, in, in a VR. Yeah. In several cases, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so, Cable's number one. I, uh, I played against a Cable. He's pretty strong. I, you know, I saw Cable several times. He's I, he's I didn't ever see him do a lot of stuff. I don't... 
I'm, I'm not real high on him. He's soft, I think. He has energy shell deflection to star. He's got toughness mid-dial. He sags down to two damage uh, mid-dial and in-dial. Uh, he has running shot and then charge and then running shot. He's eight clicks, which you're going to find these figures have a, are, are fairly long dials for the most part. Right. Um, he gets uh, psychic blast. Does he have any support powers? No, he does not. And he's like 80 points, right? He's 75 points. Got you. So but 80 with the bear trait. 80 with the bear trait. Um, but uh, he does... Uh, It's like a blast. It's like uh, blue targeting blocking, actually, on there. So that's a big deal. Yeah, but uh, the maps that I had seen, not a lot of them. It, it didn't make a bigger difference on a lot of them. It well, depends on which map you're on. Right, but. that's true. Yeah, because well, there's one that has the blocking down in the pit. In the pit. But and then there's the one that has the blocking on the sides between the start zone. Yeah, it just depends on what map you wind up having. Anymore. And if I'm, not, well, if I'm not mistaken, Cable could go from start zone to start zone, too, right? If the blocking... Uh, if one square of the blocking was taken care of, he has eight. He has eight move running shot and five range. Uh, I don't know. It was a short map, so yeah, I, it's a short map. Yeah, so maybe take a look at the maps. I think he was pretty close with maybe a perplex. He's to not be, to being able to just go from start zone to start zone. He's not bad, but he's not my favorite figure. So right, but sure. he might be a keep. He could be. I mean, uh, sorry, pool a yeah. pool. He might be depending on what else you're what else you're giving. Right. He's not. He's my, kind of my second tier that I'm looking for. Well, he's definitely a good second or third pick. Yes, for sure. Right. All right, number two. The number two is Dazzler, and I played Dazzler a lot, and she did work. Uh, she is 75 points. She has running shot, energy shield deflection, enhancement up top, and she starts with a special pulse wave that when she uses it after resolutions, each hit character is getting an action token. Right, so Pulse Wave was big in the BR I saw her against. But I think what's even more that puts her in the pool category is the enhancement. Because these dials are so long, you have got to be able to one round a figure. Yes. Her, her to not, to not let To not let somebody else uh, take her. Does she add the Shield TA as well? No, she has team player. She has Shield keyword and she's team player. Gotcha. So, uh, which team player can come in handy? Uh, but yeah, her enhancement's big, big. Uh, I was useful every time I had her. And I probably played her four games out of six. Right. Uh, I would definitely take her if I was presented with her. Unless there's just one of the beater pieces. Uh, right. In, in front of her. Sure. Um, no reason that she's not like your second choice for sure. No. But I don't, I don't see, based on some of the boosters that I saw, that she's not your first choice, right. to be honest. Right. And she's a common, so she, you're going to see her a lot. Right. Uh, next up, Jubilee, 60 points, X-Men TA, uh, four clicks of running shot, and then two of stealth to start off, energy shield deflection with a 17, she's 8, 11, 17, 3 up front, uh, she has energy explosion and precision strike for the first four clicks on her special uh, attack power, and on a pose, she has rally 5, uh, posing attack rolls. When she makes an attack after resolutions, you may remove one of her rally dice to give each hit character an action token. So that's probably my first pass. Because yeah. EE is just probably not strong enough in the BR with these long dials. Um, yeah, I mean, it might steal you some kills you know, on some figures that are already damaged. Right. Potentially, but she's not the first figure, not the first figure you're reaching for. I don't think she's the first figure anybody's reaching for. Right. She, she's probably a good third pick if you get her. I, I did have her um, in my uh, in one of my battle rolls, and she's useful enough. I'm not gonna, you know, she's not horrible by any means, but she's not the first thing you're reaching for. Right. I would say though, for sure, right, based on my experience, if you are one rounding a figure, you got to pick a figure and take it out. Yes. Because one attack's not going to do it. One attack's not going to do it. Now, we'll say rally in a BR, 4 PS and BR, is big. Yes. So any figure with a rally die is at least worth some consideration. Yeah, I mean, Jubilee's one of the shorter dials. She has uh, six clicks. Right. Uh, so she's definitely one of the shorter, easier to kill dials in the set. But only a 17 defense up front and energy shield. Uh, no reducers at all on her. Uh, so... Next up, we got the Fury. This guy is 
going to be probably one of the figures that's left for the later picks in your booster. Right. I had a game where he didn't do anything because one person had an outwit. Right. He has no range. He's a charge figure. His whole dial, he's got uh, like eight clicks. He has willpower, 17 defense, his entire dial, entire dial of charge, and he's three exploit his entire dial. So he's nothing if not consistent. Right. Um, he's 75 points. He's got 11 attack for the first four clicks, 10 for the last four. Um, and he has, at the beginning of your turn, you may roll a d6 and heal them equal to half the result. I didn't see anybody pulling this guy like first out of the booster. No, he was definitely but, my later pick, and somebody had an outwit, and he didn't do anything because they just always yeah. outwitted his charge. Yeah, I think uh, he's probably going to be sticking around for your, for your later picks. Right. Um, if you're down to your third or fourth pick, he might be okay to take. Right. Uh, same thing for the Sevalethi Vampire. Yeah, that's a pass. Yeah. All right, that's a that's a that's a pass. He's a five click, you know, charge blades exploit piece for forty points, which doesn't sound horrible, but yeah, he's gonna be left for the end of your booster probably. Right. Uh, white. Same thing. We got White Priestess. And this was one of the last figures that was getting passed around most of the time. Now, I remember the slop ones are significantly worse than the main set one is what it feels like. like but White, maybe I was wrong. White Priestess is 40 points, double target, 5 range, starts with 2 clicks of running shot. She has end cap her entire dial, energy shield her entire dial. She's uh, 8, 11, 17, 2 for her up and chop stats. She gets prob on her last 3 clicks. Uh, if she had it on her first click, then we yeah, that'd be better. That'd talking be about something else here. Right. Uh, she has a special. She has a trait protecting the Starlight Citadel. If White Priestess is indoors, modify her attack and defense plus one. Oh, uh, that's right. Yeah. So yeah. one of them is useless indoors and one outdoors. Right. So that's probably your. I would say that that's a good third pick. Yeah. If and we can if you're just, indoor. If, well, we can just say the other one's outdoor because it's the yeah. same deal. Yeah. Green Priestess is the same thing. Right. Different powers, obviously. But yeah, try to pick the one for the map that you're going to be playing on yeah. that game. Yeah, Green Priestess is, is, is stealth. Uh, six range with single target, side blast, and super senses, and three damage. Uh, but she has no movement attack. She's going to be just a sniper uh, from wherever you're sitting around. She gets the plus one attack and defense outdoors. Right. So, making her a 12 attack for three psychic blast isn't horrible, but she's not going to be moving around doing it. Right, unfortunately. Uh, Empath, he's a 75 point figure, um, his special movement power for the first four clicks is mind control, he has five range. Who's this? This is Empath. Okay. Uh, when Empath uses that resolutions, give a hit character a thrall token if they don't already have one. When Empath uses Mastermind, he can cho instead choose an adjacent opposing character with a thrall token, regardless of keywords or point value. And when a character with a Thrall token takes damage from an attack, remove their Thrall token. So he has Mastermind for the first four clicks. Yeah, I just saw that. Somebody played that figure, and I just never saw that coming up. He is Precision Strike with one damage. Right. Uh, and like a Mind Control, six movement, five range. So he has no movement attack. He doesn't have a long range. I don't like this figure very much. No, I don't either. Yeah. Pass. Pass you, for me. Pass unless you've got a bullet. Gray Crow. Greco's. I remember Greco being good. He's a point. pretty good attacker. Uh, he's running shot, psychic blast, 17 energy shield up top. Uh, he has a special damage power for the first four clicks. When he has two action tokens after resol, when he hits a character with two action tokens after resolutions, remove an action token from him. Yes, the pacing with Greco makes him a pool. Yeah. Uh, he's also got five range single target, which is, you're going to see is kind of. Uh, a kind, a kind a theme of a theme here, yeah. in it. They're, they're fairly short ranges, long dials, not a ton of reducers, um, not a lot of big damage. So those enhancement characters like Dazzler just are worth more weight, right? Because of that. Man, am I seeing like we're gonna go through our set, our tier maker quickly because these are all like mm -hmm. D D D D. Well, it's a battle royal set. I think it's for right. what it. For, the, for a battle royal, this is a fun set. Yeah, I agree. For a battle royal, it's fun. All right, I, 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 won't, I won't, I won't.
won't try to mention Constructed too much. I have to say, this is probably the most fun Battle Royal I have played in a long, long time. Right. Until we got in that BR with the Apocalypse. Now, that is a problem. We'll talk about him later. Right, yeah. Next up, we got Rogue. And Rogue is a figure that you want to pull if you see her. Uh, she is 100 points. She has a 9-click long dial with a full dial of invulnerability. Full dial charge. Full dial close combat expert. Uh, she starts 10, 12, 18, 3. Uh, she, and she's one of the rare flyers in the set. Right. She has no range. X-Men and Brotherhood TA. She's one of the powerhouse figures, I feel like, uh, in the set. You can give her... I, I had her the first game and put uh, the Pogger Pog sword on her, which gave her a giant reach three. Oh, gosh, that's a power combo. And that was a, that was a hell of a combo. Yeah, it gives, she's 12 for four, or 13 for four, if hitting, uh, you know, with, with giant reach three. Uh, she's, like I said, she's long dodge. She takes a lot of damage. Um, I would get, if you see her, I'd grab her. Right. Especially if you know what, since you know what swords you're getting. Right, through. you know what swords you're going to have. I mean, she's good with any of the swords, I think, for the most part. Right. Um, but she's a, she's a, she can punch hard. And uh, like I say, she flies, so she can carry someone. Especially if you get somebody with a power, like Cypher, or uh, something like that. Um, she's definitely or something. Or just grabbing a light object. Yeah, that too. Uh, Wild Child is next up. Uh, he's 60 points, double target, uh, zero range. Starts with charge, blades. Battle Fury is a special defense power, which is kind of a reflex of Super Senses and Toughness. Uh, he has a traits willpower, but only if Wild Child takes to a friendly character at higher point value than him. Uh, I haven't seen a whole lot of this guy. No, I, that didn't. I I think he play. I think we played against. I think I played against him in one, and I didn't really see him doing much. Yeah, I didn't. The one game I saw him in, I didn't see him do a lot either. He does have a nice defense. Right, but um, that and that kind of makes him uh, avoidable because a lot of times in a BR you're going to go for the figures that are e harder, easier to kill, easier to kill unless you have an outwit. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you don't still want to try for the senses, right? Right. I mean, you can just you can just that's your whole turn. And in a fifty to one hour BR, right? You, you it's your whole turn. Yeah, right. you're right. Yeah. And like someone was asking for like general BR strategies, and it's like, yeah, I. Don't go while you're sleepy. Yeah, here you know, don't right. don't waste your time trying to kill a figure you can't kill on your turn because somebody else is gonna snake it from you. That's right, yeah. And with the prizes that we have coming out of this set, right, like um, you have like if Yeah. If you don't think that like you're gonna be able to buy the figures or whatever, like you I think folks are gonna have to be like or if you're playing at a big venue, right, where, you know, there's like six or ten or twelve or more of you, right, where the, the prizes and the points are actually going to matter at the end of the thing. Um, like, right. yeah, you probably gonna, you're going to have to be playing real sharp, right? Yeah. Snaking figures, snaking kills, making sure that you can one-turn figures, one-round figures, and... It's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be tough for a lot of folks to get a hold of that Genesis and Apocalypse at the end of the three months. All right, then we got uh, Stepford Cuckoo, which is the last of the commons. This is not a pull figure. Uh, yeah, that's a pass. So what do we say? Wild Child is a pass, basically. I think Wild Child is a pass, especially right. on your first your first couple of pulls. Right. Um, now, the Stepford Cuckoo is interesting because you can get a prob. Yes, you can get a prob. She's a 15 point single click figure. But you're not. You're gonna wait until you probably get that back, because uh, what you what you want? No, you don't get figures back in this one. You d you don't. Uh, right. So, actually, you, yeah, you don't get any figures back. You're getting somebody else's. Uh, that's right. Last figure. I don't. Right. I don't think anybody's taking this up front. But this there is no offense here. This character has six range, no move and attack. There's a mind control click, a side blast click, a outwit click, a prob a prob click. And a perplex. This is strictly a support for support figure. She's right. dealing two damage. She's one click deep. She has no defense. Right. It's a seventeen. Right. It is much better figure whenever it's yeah. a, it's as it's as a pog generated by the main yeah. set Emma. Right. If she can use for that, which is great. If this thing comes back to me at the end, I'm okay with it because then I have a prob or I have a perplex. Right. Or an outwit, and that's fine. But you're definitely not taking this when you open your booster. Right. No, not for sure. You're hoping that the 
guy next to you, the guy in front of you, or not the guy, the, the player in front of you, that yeah. is the second deer that yeah. we've seen on the trip. Uh, doesn't take her, yeah. Right, you're hoping that the guy in front of you pulls one, uh, the player in front of you pulls yeah. one, and then that the other players don't yeah. take it. I'm happy if I get her, but I'm not pulling her out with on my own. No, not on your second or third pick, I'd no. say. No. All right, so uncommons. First up, we got Storm. This is a pull figure. I've seen Storm do a lot of work, and she did for me. Uh, she's 70 points, 5 range, double targets. She's charged her whole down. She's another flyer. Uh, she has uh, four clicks of a special attack power up front uh, to give her giant reach three and quake. And then she goes to precision. She has super senses up front. Exploit weakness for the first four clicks. Three damage. She's 12, 11, 18, three up front. And she has a trait, which is rally five for opposing. Uh, she has just traded stealth, which is big. And That's has, huge. That's huge on those yeah, maps. It's absolutely huge. Uh, and she has free remove one of Storm's rally dice if you do this turn when Storm makes an attack. Opposing characters can't positively modify their defense values. Oh, that is gosh, big. that's huge, yeah. Because you're getting those fives in a BR. Yeah. yeah, she is absolutely huge. She's got exploit and she's got charge. She has a big movement. She flies and she's got double target uh, close combat attacks she can make. She's got giant reek three quake is amazing. Um, I mean, she can carry her in power with her. So. But she's probably not quaking. Probably she, she probably she may not be quaking. It just depends on when you're doing it, right? And what your setup is. Um, if you can if you can kill multiple figures, then you want to do it. But right, she is a, she is an amazing figure. I I want her every time I see her in the booster. I feel like yeah, her defense is good. Her trait her rally trait is really good. Being able to stop them from mod from modifying their defense values is uh, right. Is that that makes that combat reflexes figure a lot easier to, to snake on. Exactly. Or even the energy shield deflection. Right. Um, so then we have Havoc. And I like Havoc as well. I played Havoc a couple times. Uh, he's 100 points. He's 6 range. He's dual targets. Brotherhood and X-Men. Uh, he is a full dial of running shot, a full dial of leadership, which is not a ton of leadership in the set. Right, leadership's huge. Leadership's a big power to have. And so, remind me here, okay, so, so this is a little bit more BR, a little more casual related episode. Mm -hmm. uh, and just, Havoc is Cyclops' brother. That's right, right? Alex Summers. Uh -huh. He's the middle brother of the three. Oh, and then the other, who's the other brother? The other brother is going to be Vulcan. Vulcan, okay. He's the little brother. All right, so... Havoc. We hear, do you think, Jason, that this is a definitive Havoc 20 years into the Hero Clicks being around? Uh, it's probably as close as we've ever got, I feel like. Right. I, okay. I really like this figure a lot. Because the Legacy card definitely doesn't feel definitive. No, Legacy card should have gave him some movement attack and he would have been a whole lot better. Right. But we didn't get that, but then we got a whole dial of running shot here of eight clicks. Um,. Havoc has a trait, Rally 5, Opposing Attack Rolls, free, remove one of Havoc's Rally Die. If you do this turn when Havoc makes a ranged attack, if he's not moved or placed this turn, you modify his range and damage, plus 2. Uh, so he's hitting pretty hard if he gets to sit there. I like him, especially if you're on the map that has the pit, and he's on the outer rim, and he's shooting down right. uh, at other figures, and he have a, like you have an enhancement to back him up. Um, he has five clicks of a special attack power to start, which is plasma discharge, he has energy explosion, and penetrating psychic blast. Uh, and then he also has a defense power, containment suit, energy shield deflection, toughness, and willpower. So he can take tokens off of himself. Uh, he has a reducer. He has a, he's, he's a 20 from range because he's a 10, 12, 18, 3 to start. Uh, I mean, to me, it sounds like willpower, leadership, this guy is almost like the definitive figure yeah. to pull first, I'd say. I, I, yeah, I took him first at least a couple of times. He did a lot of work. Right. Uh, he's a great range figure to have. Um, so, yeah, I'm definitely going for him if I see him. Rock Slide is our next one. Rock Slide's 80 points. I had a terrible experience with Rock Slide. Yeah? You want to you elaborate on that? 
it's a charge figure, and then it's you a have charge figure. that it, get, it gets hit, it goes into the pulse wave, but pulse wave is so awful, and then you heal up onto a charge piece. I just feel like I don't know, like maybe I'm just not cut out for BRs, but he's not a he's not a figure that you're reaching for in competitive. Right, and he's, I don't think he's a figure that you're reaching for first in your pool and pass either. He's not a figure that's he's rain. He's a he's a ten charge, eleven quake, eighteen invuln, three damage. He does have two stop clicks with regen and toughness. He has, he does have pulse wave power on both of those. Range of six. After resolutions, you heal him one click for each target. He's a figure that can sit there and punch it above his weight and not die. I yeah I, I must have played him wrong because everybody was just able to like triple tap him. Yeah, I guess uh, maybe that was unlucky. I don't know. He can tie up some figures and keep them at bay. Um, I don't like the fact that he has a short charge range and he doesn't hit for enough damage. Right. But he's not going to die easy. That's for sure. Right. Uh, yeah, they, maybe I was just a little unlucky with him. I guess if they knock him to the stop clicks. He has flurry. Uh, first one is, is I think on click three. It's not a figure that you want to go attack to score points. Well, that's what I did. I ran up, like, I ran him up and was like, okay, well, they're going to have to knock him to his flurry or I'll get the pulse wave. No, they were just like, bop, 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 bop. Well, dark side's black in my start zone. Right. I got stuck with two of these guys uh, at one point against the Super Rare Apocalypse. Um, The two of them were, were able to mostly tie him down. But they just don't have enough offensive capability, I feel like, to really take right. anything out. Um, but he's not horrible. I was, I'm definitely not picking him first. He's going to be a pass if there's other if there's other stuff in my first Right, for the first pick. Yeah, for the first pick for sure. Cypher. Cypher is not a pull on the first one for sure. But he's a good support piece. I'm definitely not a, sad if I see him come back to me. I did play him. Uh, he's got... Charge his whole dial. Combat reflexes his whole dial. Starts with a special power of outwit and perplex, and he gets perplex on his last two clicks. Uh, he has a trait. Friendly character with the X Men keyword in range can use the team ability chosen by Cipher for team player because he does have team player team ability. Um, but have we even encountered anybody that has Brotherhood? I guess is the only yeah other Brotherhood X Men are so far the only TA yeah. that we have. Um, and I can't remember off the top of my head if there's other ones or not. We'll fight. We'll get to that. But he's 19 up close because he has combat reflexes. Uh, he doesn't do a lot of damage. He is a good like he is a good support figure. I don't. Know. Sometimes I like to put the sword on a figure like him because he becomes an offensive threat. Right. Because of the blades. Right. 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 That makes sense. Um, I get. I did this in the game that I played him. I gave him the sword. Uh, he promptly went up and rolled six damage and KO'd a figure. Right. Um, so if your other figures are uh, hardy enough on the attack side without the sword, I can, that's not a bad strategy. But at one perplex or not, uh, there's not a lot of it in the set, so he's definitely one that you want right. later on. Uh, and then Pogger Pog. Which is not the giant Pogger Pog, this is the little guy. Uh, he's 60 points. He's got a full dial of stealth, full dial of super senses, three clicks of outwit, and then three clicks of, um, what is that? Uh, shape change? Shape change, yeah. Yeah. I can't see the color good with my glasses on. Um, when Pogger Pog starts the game as a trait, he's gener- he generates an armored Pogger Pog bystander. If armored Pogger Pog was generated this way, he may use the effect of any sword equipment equipped to Pogger Pog. So he does make a nice Pog. Which is a dolphin symbol giant that's a 10 charge, 10 precision strike, 17 toughness, 3 damage, battle fury. Interesting. Um, and that has a trait armored Pogger Pog can't be chosen for mastermind. After the resolution of any action, if no friendly character named Pogger Pog is on the map, you KO the Pog. When armored Pogger Pog would, make, would take any damage, you may roll a d6 instead. On a one through three, you deal an unavoidable damage. You deal Pog or Pog an unavoidable damage. On a four through six, you deal two unavoidable damage to Pog or Pog. 
so that the, the paw can deal his damage off to the actual figure. So that's definitely a pull then, right? Yeah, I think that's a pretty. It's pretty good. Because and then you probably give the sword to Pog or Pog, right? Well, yeah, the, the Pog can use the effect of any sword given to Pog or Pog. So, right. Yes. So depending on obviously what sword you pull, but yeah, um, he's he's definitely useful. That soul sword on that Pog would be annoying in this in a VR. <laughs> yes, of where he's stealing Mystics back and then not dying. Yes. Uh, never mind. Well, yeah, because that would mean that Pog or no. Never mind. That soul sword doesn't work. Oh yeah, I guess it would. Because it's not yeah. getting damage. You're not damaging from, him. You're not yeah. damaging from an attack. Um, so maybe that's the worst one. But the giant reach one. But yeah, the actual or, Pogger Pog sword it gives him giant reach three. Well, he's got giant reach two, two for me, which is a little better. Yeah, so maybe like one of the reroll swords. I don't know. Um, then we got solemn. He's seventy points. Uh, he starts with charge, then goes to flurry. He's got four clicks of a special defense, adamantium skin. Uh, he's invincible. When Solemn uses it to reduce damage from an equipped opposing character's attack, he reduces by three instead. Protected outwit. So he's a hard to take down figure. Right. Uh, he doesn't have a big charge range. Though. He's only eight movement. He has three exploit. Right. And that was the problem that I saw. Is that the one outwit is enough to yeah keep went on him right. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have a Solemn, but the guy. So it was the the player sitting next to me. And then the player that was sitting diagonal from me were going at it. Well, he was outwitting the Solemn to keep it at bay. Right. And, like, I mean, it was a good strategy, right? Maybe that's not a, you know, so maybe Solemn's not your first pool. No, I don't think so. I don't like the figures with a short charge range and no range. Because we haven't even seen a TK so far. I don't even know if there is a TK. I'm not sure. I had not looked through it enough to tell you. Um, but we're yeah. almost through the uncommons if we haven't heard of a TK yet. Now we got one of the big boys, though. Or big girls, as we should say. Uh, Rachel Summers. I had a great experience with Rachel Summers. Rachel Summers is 125 points. She's a seven range X Men TA. She is a flyer. She starts with six clicks of running shot, and then three clicks of phasing, six clicks of psychic blast, and then three clicks of TK on the. But the TK is down. But the down dial. Uh, she has six clicks of an opening defense power that gives her invulnerability, super senses, and that is protected outwit. Uh, then she goes super senses on the last three along with, uh, she has no damage power except for the last three has RCE, but she's running shot, side blast, 12 attack, 4 damage, right. 10 movement. And her rally die was huge. Her rally die is free, so it's for rally 5 on opposing attack rolls, free or remove one of her rally dies if you do until your next turn. Friendly characters is an x -Men keyword, and there are a lot uh, that can use energy shield deflection. Yeah. So every turn my fi every turn I played her, my X-Men figures all had ESD. Yeah, your, your rally downs are going to pile up. Right. Um, this is a pull for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And it's funny, like, Regenesis Rachel Summers uh, was the powerhouse. Yeah. Because she did the hypersonic TK thing. Right. And... I'm like, okay, whoever... So there's, some, there's some designer that likes Rachel in a BR yeah. design. Yeah. Uh, I, I saw this figure once. It was across from me. It was a little scary to look at, but I did wreck her face. Well, wow. if she misses her super senses, then... Yeah, or she, if you have exploit, it makes a big deal. Yeah, if you if she misses her super senses, you can, take, you can pile on her to take her out. Um, I was able to snake her... Uh, somebody else hit her first because, of course, she's the big bad. Uh, and then I was able to finish it off. Right. But uh, makes sense. Yeah, she she you want her if you if you see her for right. sure. Orphan maker. Oh, this was definitely a pass. I didn't feel like this one was a really big, a big impact maker. I don't Maybe, know if I'm not mistaken. I like this guy. I played him. I like him. Uh, he's 75 points, five range, single target. He has running shot and then charge and then running shot again. He has psychic blast and then super strength and then precision strike and then he's 18 and vulnerable for three clicks and then toughness and he has a stop click. Uh, and when he hits a stop click, it's, he has a vulnerability when it's first revealed for the rest of the game. He modifies his combat values plus one. Okay, so maybe I'm not thinking and of Orphan Maker then. He also starts with Perplex. He's 10, 11, 18, 3. And he has Perplex up top. He's okay, so this seven is seven clicks long. Yeah, I'm not the same one. This definitely sounds like a pool. He's a, he's, I think he's a pool. Yeah, he's yeah. hard to take down. Uh, he, he's a good 
attacker. He has a support power built in. He has a stop click, so you're not just giving up those points. Right. And he gets, he gets you know, plus one to his combat value. So his last click, he's running shot, precision strike, uh, invuln for, uh, he's a, he'll be 9, 11, 18, 4, and he has perplex. Yeah. So, I'd pull him. Uh, summoner. Summoner is 85 points, zero range. Is still in the uncommons or removed to rare? This is the last uncommon. Okay. No, I'll take it back. There's one more. Charge and then phasing for him, a full dial of precision strike. He has 18 invincible for the first four clicks. Then four clicks of invuln. He has shape change and then outwit. He's 10, 11, 18, 4. So uh, he has a trait, mind control. But he has zero range, so it's going to be the minimum. Uh, mind there control. is no minimum. Oh, is that anymore? No. Uh, no, 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 that's on end cap. There, is a, there is a minimum on mind control. Yeah, My bad. Four range. My bad. Uh, I think it's six. Six range now? Okay. Yeah. Mind control, when Summoner uses it and targets an opposing character with a shared keyword, he modifies an attack plus two, which is he's animal, a rock, mystical warrior. So there's a fair amount you're going to see. Well, so, like, I don't know if I want my four damage figure to be mind controlling. No, it's probably not what you but it's what he does. Right. Free, and he has also free, choose a target opposing character within six squares and line of fire until your next turn. That character can't use safeguard mind control. I don't think that's going to come up much here. No. But, but he is four, four damage, and that's big. And he can soak a lot of damage. Right. So maybe a pool. He's not he's not horrible. I've played him. Right. Uh, Risqué is the last uncommon. She does some interesting stuff. She is a shield TA, and maybe the only the only shield TA in the set. So that could be pretty big. But she's six range, she's 45 points, she has stealth for the first three clicks, and then force blast for three clicks. She has uh, six clicks of special attack power, which is telekinesis. Okay. So she's 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 not a top dial pull because yeah, you don't want to pull she's your not an attack, yeah, yeah, she's not an attack figure, but you're not you're not satisfied. So you're probably back. if you probably want her pulled by the person next to you because you probably pull your TK second. Yeah, yeah, you probably want her to yeah to come at you second or third. Yeah, right. Um, well, you probably pull her second if you have one of the big charge pieces as your first yeah pick. for yeah for sure right uh she had also her uh, special type power is telekinesis and also power choose an unheld object within range and line of fire deal two damage to all opposing characters within two squares of that object and then remove it from the game and then she has uh, i had not seen her that seems pretty good that's a that's a nice that power might be fun for other stuff i don't know right um and she has How many points is she? She's 45. Does she inherently have a sword bear trait? No. It's only like the special one granted by the Battle Royal. That's basically. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, 48. What keywords does she have? She's sword next men. And she's shield TA. Ooh, man. That, that's, a, that's a little swappy, swappy stuff going on. We'll get, the, uh, the blowing up objects and dealing damage might be. Well, that's a big deal. Versus, constructed or something. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a big deal versus Sakari and Iron Man. Yeah, as you can tell, my mind is always on constructed. Yes, um, but, but she's, uh, she's a play if you can, just not your top. And she's not your top attacker. You always, you want to take your top main damage dealer as your first pick. Right. Absolutely. That's that's your strategy. Right. But if you get a chance to pull her later on, you want her. Yeah, I agree. Uh, she has a special defense power, super senses, and willpower for the first three clicks, and then goes to combat reflections. Okay. I like that blow up damage on there. Yeah, that could be uh, interesting. Right. Uh, now we got rares. Uh, Iska the Unbeaten. She's 85 points. She has uh, half dial, she's eight dial that clicks long, half dial charge, and then half dial flurry. Uh, no attack power up front. The back half is, re is uh, four clicks of. Uh, What's the movement power? Charge and then flurry. Ugh. Yes. She's 10 movement. She got steel energy on the last half of her attack slot. She's in Vuln on the first half and super senses on the last half, and she gets close combat expert up for the first half of her damage slot. Right. So she's 10. She'll be 10, 12, 17, 4 when, she, when she's hitting there. Close combat. She has no range, and she does have tight trait uh, tychokinesis when it's going to be unbeaten attacks or is attacked. Opposing characters' combat values except range can't be positively modified. It's not bad. What's her defensive power? Invulnerability. 
Yeah, that, that helps. It helps. Yeah. You're no close combat expert against you. Right. No perplex enough attack. Uh, she also has traded perplex. When it's going to be unbeaten, uses it to target an opposing character until your next turn. She may replace her printed combat value of the tar- with the target's printed combat value, the same combat type chosen to be modified. Speed, attack, defense, or range. So, um, you know, maybe you pull this one if you see that your buddy sitting to your right has pulled the risque. Yeah. Like so, maybe that's and that's maybe that's the next little strategy bite when it comes to BRs. What was the other guy? Look at what's being pulled and what's coming towards you, yeah. and what should you pull first based on that? That's definitely that's definitely a valid right because like you should be establishing beforehand that you're you know picking and passing to your left, mm-hmm. right? Um, I don't know if your venue like does weird stuff, right? I can't really help that, but. I'm just saying, in general, you should be, like, picking and passing to your left. Um, yeah, I'm definitely looking at what my opponents are getting. Right. Because, uh, you know, maybe something works better with what they're pulling. Versus right, because you also want to see if someone pulls the super rare apocalypse. Right. And you're just like, well, let's just forget this BR and move on to the next one. Um, so, yeah, it's, it could be a pull. Yeah. Next guy is definitely a pull. Okay. This is the 145-point Wolverine. Jeez. Yeah, this guy is 11 clicks deep. Yeah, he's definitely a pulled in, right? Yeah, he's X Men TA. Zero target, zero range, double target. He has a six move charge for the first two clicks. He, he goes two clicks of charge and then a click of flurry and then two clicks of charge and a click of flurry and back. His hold down. Right. He has a bear attack slot, but he starts with a 12 attack for the first three clicks. Right, well, uh, his attack slot is blades. Because that's what he's getting from the sword. sword. Yeah, if you give him the sword, yes. Uh, he starts with a special defense power, which he alternates every three clicks. He has it every other, every, every three clicks, which is impervious super senses, which is a protected outwit. And he gets super senses and impervious between those special attack, attack uh, special defense powers singly. He starts with leadership. He has four base damage for the first three clicks. That's and, huge. Then he goes to three... Uh, he, he alternates between leadership, exploit, and close combat. Oh, and expert. he's leadership? Is he leadership top dial? He's leadership top dial. That's big and a big. Yeah, that's absolutely a pool. And I then, and then, and then it's not even, that's not even that's all. That's not even it? It's not even and it. there's more. There's more, Daniel. Uh, he has a trait. Oh, he also has improved movement characters. That's huge in a BR. That's huge in a BR. Absolutely huge. Uh, and he has a trait. Uh, I seem to always be returning from hell. Willpower. Whenever Wolverine rolls a five or six for a single D six roll, be that blades, leadership, super sense is impervious. Yeah. After resolution, you impervious. remove an action token from him, and he can heal a click. Oh, he's got impervious. He's impervious. Oh my god. He has super sense is impervious, which is protected out with a top dial. That's an, that's absurd. He's an absolutely nuts figure to pull for this. Yeah. Yeah. You can take this guy over just about any other thing and you're gonna come across. Right. Yeah, you should never be past this figure, it sounds like. Yeah, this guy is absolutely fantastic in a BR. Uh and he's only ninety five points. Uh I think he was hundred. Oh no, I'm sorry, that's just low dial, excuse me. hundred and forty five. Hundred and forty five, right. yeah. yeah. But if someone manages to get through him, yeah, uh, that's a problem. The times I've seen him, nobody ever even got close. Right. War is next up. 70 points, 6 range, double targets. Uh, I think I pulled the war and wasn't impressed. Yeah, he starts out with running shot and then charge, psychic blast for his first half, perplex up top. He has a special defense power up top, which is energy shield and willpower. And then he has a trait, uh, the first children at the beginning of the game. If you're starting forces two or more characters with the horseman keyword. Which you're just so, like, I've never seen that happen in a BR. Yeah, it may not come into play, so don't count on that making a difference. Right, because, like, the horsemen were all rares, I think, and pretty much the best figure in the booster. And, like, you're never going to get that pass to you. Yeah, if you, if you do get it, then he has still energy with closer range attacks. Right. And also, if a friendly character named Apocalypse, Annihilation, or Genesis is on your force... Modify Wars Attack and Defense plus one. 
Right. So you're if you're pulling the apocalypse, because the the main set has those yeah. same traits too, right? Um, I don't know if it's exactly the same or not. Yeah, I think it's I, I think it is. So uh, it's a lot easier to pull off and construct it. But I, I think you're never going to get you're probably not going to get pulled this guy, especially if the guy sees that you pulled the apocalypse. You're not going to get past the yeah. war or the death or whatever. He's not the greatest, but he might be your best figure. He is a rare. Right. But I think there are stuff in the uncommon slot that's better. Than he right. Is. Yeah, I agree. I would definitely take over him. Then we got Death next up, which Death's, uh, Death's a pass, probably. Is he the charge one? He's the phasing teleport starting off. Ugh, does he have, like, a special phasing where he moves? It's just plain phasing. Uh, what, what, how much range? He has four range double targets. He yeah, has a, out, right. outwit. How many points is he? 70. And that's he's a, seven pass. clicks. His thing that he has going for him is he has a special smoke cloud. He has smoke cloud. Smoke cloud is free, and when he makes a close attack, he can target opposing characters in his smoke cloud markers, regardless of adjacency. Yeah. And then he has super sensors willpower as his defense. Yeah. I think this is a this is a pass figure. Yeah, I mean unless I mean unless you just get like a terribly collated booster, it doesn't sound like that guy's your first pick. No, I I don't think so. Manifold. Manifold 75 points. This guy is probably a is probably a pull. Okay. He is four range. He's shield TA and team and team player. He is another flyer. He starts with a 12 move charge. He's four clicks of charge, three clicks of flurry. Of, uh, yeah, flurry. And then he has uh, four clicks of blades. Uh, three clicks of prob. Then he goes to close combat expert. His defense power is combat reflex, his willpower, and Jason Finley characters can use combat reflexes, which is absolutely huge. Right. I would say, like, you had me. What's his movement power again? It's charge and flight. And here's a trait. Yeah. Uh, passenger 2, phasing teleport, and stealth. When he uses phasing teleport after resolutions, you can choose a character with, who's square he moved through. And that character can't use improved abilities until your next turn. That is an improved. It's not improved movement or targeting. It's just improved abilities. Improved abilities. Right. Uh. Yeah. I mean, you you had me sold at like top dial prob. That's almost always a good pick first in a BR. Yeah. Plus he's plus he's shield. Plus he's a he's a he's a you know a passenger two flyer, and he's got a twenty defense up close. He's an eleven attack, eighteen defense, three damage, twelve movement. Right. And he gives your guys combat reflexes. Majority of your attacks are going to be close combat. Right. Yeah, this guy's done. I saw this guy in the BR and he was absolutely amazing. Uh, Nanny. Okay, Nanny was the one that I was thinking about that's not very good. Nanny's a pass. Uh, okay. Uh, All right, yeah, Nanny was the orphan maker I was thinking about earlier. Yeah, Nanny's a flyer. That's really her only redeeming trait to me. But because she only has six movements, she has double targets, zero range. She has precision, she has invulnerability up top, she's three damage, 11 attack, she has a full dial of mind control and stealth. When she uses mind control to target characters with less than 100 points, modified defense minus two. Uh, I just don't like this figure a whole lot for a battle royal. How, how much range? Well, it's zero range, so she has the minimum six mind control. Gosh, that's, yeah. No I... moving attack. What's her in her defense is what? Invulnerability, and she has stealth. Yeah, that's probably defense. not. Yeah, that's just not worth it. I, I just don't like I, I feel like that's the rare that's going to be like from the... That's going to be the fourth figure that you end up with from the other other person's yeah. booster. Yeah, I've seen your past people for sure. I, this is not the figure that's going to win you games. No, absolutely not. Uh, yeah, definitely a low point. I mean, uh, yeah, she's down there with death. I don't like her much. Gorgon. Uh, he's zero range, double target. Now, he's got the you can do two swords thing, right? Uh, his sword bearer trait is that, yes, the character starts right. with any two distinct swords equipped. Which is just not, not going to come into play. Which here. is not going to come into play. But, how many points is he? 80 points. Ooh, Top but, dial, he's 80 points. He has a 45 point dial for yeah, so, constructed. Yeah, so constructed, maybe he, he's dropping two swords, right? He's got X-Men keyword. He is uh, Assassin Martial Arts X-Men. Right, so yeah, dropping two swords, that's for 50 points. You get basically, mm -hmm. he's basically 30 points. Yes, that's right. 
Yeah. All right. I'm. I'm in. But All right. for this for this purpose, he's charged the ten movement. He's twelve attack, eighteen combat reflexes, three damage with exploit weakness, and free. Choose an adjacent opposing character and roll a d6. Four through six give that character an action token. Yes. That, I, I'd th- pull this figure. That, that's a pull. That's a pull for sure. Yeah. yeah. I've seen him doing work. That four through six was always useful. Um, yeah. Yeah, it gets good for your pacing, slowing them down. Uh, he is hard to hit up with a 20 up close. Yeah. He's got a good attack. He's his exploit, so I like him. Right. Okay, next figure. This guy, this guy is for sure a pull. Okay. Mr. Sinister. Oh, yeah, okay, all right. So before we talk about him, I would just like to say that in our pod, uh, my last pod that I played, we passed a new guy to Mr. Sinister's. And nobody made an attack against him all game. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, definitely Mr. Sinister is a pool. Mr. Sinister is 80 points, 6 range, single target, running shot, then mind control, side blast, and then poison, toughness, and then combat reflexes. He has a special damage power, leadership, outwit, and shape change. When he uses shape change and succeeds, he can't be attacked for the turn. So one shape change roll, nobody's touching him for the rest of the turn. That's pretty big. Right. But that's not even the biggest thing. He has a traded rally dice, which is blue, friendly attack rolls. It gives him plasticity as a trait. And then once per turn, you may remove one of Mr. Sinister's rally dice. Uh, and it's a one. It's a rally one. Uh, you remove right. his rally dice to replace the die and an opposing attack roll with it. There is no line of fire or range needed. Yeah. It's board wide. Right. So if you pull this Mr. Sinister, I... Because you're likely to roll a one on your attacks. That, Somebody, yeah. I mean, well, no, they're I mean, friendly I mean, attacks. One, one of your characters is very likely to do it. Whatever. Right. Yeah. And like once you get that loaded, you're almost set to just do whatever you want. To say, I mean, and, and, I don't know. Yeah. VR politics is the thing. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, I mean, I've seen it happen. And, I mean, you just use this guy. You just use yeah, it to save, just, his, save your ass. When yeah, we, or you use it to just uh, stop a kill across the board. Stop a kill across the board to soften it up, or say, "Hey, let's not be attacking me." Yeah, I've got a prop piece and a one loaded here, right? Yeah, and, if like, and if they go try, you roll the shape change or whatever. Yeah, and if they roll a one or a two or whatever. Yeah, if you, uh, a pairing, right, and they don't have a prob, well, yeah. then you just go, here, you critically missed. If you have more than one of these loaded, you have amazing board control. Right. You own the board. Yeah, you basically own the board. This, this Sinister, Yeah. Uh, we obviously did not read what he did, and um, we all paid for it um, with the yeah. new guy there at the table. Yeah, absolutely must have... And then this guy, you know, I mean, I don't know. He may be good otherwise. He's he got a 45-point down. Right. Uh, Captain Britain's the first super rare. And I don't think I saw any super rare but Apocalypse in my three games that I played. Yeah. Now, if you see a super rare, we'll go through these, but you're probably grabbing the game. Because you probably don't have a rare in your booster, if I had to guess. I don't remember if that's how they came, because I never pulled a super rare. Right. Uh, but you got Mr. We got uh, Captain Britain, uh, Mystics, X Men T A, five range, single target, ninety five points. Flyer starts with charge, and then plasticity, and then charge, and then plasticity. Is uh, this uh, the? Uh, this is this is Betsy. Betsy, yeah, okay. Uh, starts with precision strike, uh, combat reflexes is an 18, 12 attack, three damage, close combat expert. So she's hitting pretty hard. Thirteen for four with charge. Um, and then depending on what sword you get, right? She's mm-hmm. already got Mystics. Right. I mean, yeah, so she, yeah, you, you pull her. Mystics in a BR is so huge. Yeah. Um, and for some reason you get the Soul Sword with her. Yeah, that's, a, that's an uh, amazing combo. You're almost uh, untouchable with her. Yeah, she's nine clicks deep. Uh, she has a trait when a friendly character within range line of fire uses charge as a resolution to roll a D6. Then a 5-6... Remove an action token from that character. Oh, wow. That's huge. So she can take a char- token off of herself when she charges. Right. She also has another trait, Tenacity Always. It just gives her... Uh, well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Why the hell does she have combat reflexes and then combat reflexes traded? Maybe it's just an error in the... 
Maybe it's an error here, folks. I don't know. That does that, that that can't be right. Or is it a special defense power? It says it's a trade, but then it's, they, they don't show a special defense. They don't show a special wow. power at all. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, if anybody has her, and they can tell us that for sure. But anyway, uh, it also says leadership, but succeeds in a four through six. Well, Captain Britain uses it and succeeds in addition to normal effects she removed. It actually took over from the character within range. Right. That's huge. That's a pool figure. That's a pool instantly. Yep. Yeah. All right. Next one. Bay the Blood Moon. I did actually. I did pull Bay the Blood Moon. I don't. I don't think I had a rare in my in my pack. Now that I think about it. Uh, Bay the Blood Moon is 95 points, 8 clicks, starts with charge for the first 5, and then goes to flurry. She has no attack powers. A full dial of special attack, which is defend, a special defense, which is defend and impervious. She has a 19 defense for the first 2 clicks. Yeah, that's And cool. the last 2, which that's is 18 cool. in the middle. Yep. She starts with perplex, 3 damage. Pool. 11 attack. Yep, she's a pool. Yep. Uh, she has a trait wedding vow. This isn't going to come in and play a whole lot. Uh, at the beginning of the game, choose a friendly character. This game, the chosen character can use Mastermind, but only to choose Bay the Blood Moon, regardless of point value. If the chosen character is named Cypher, she may use it regardless of adjacency. Um, I don't know what your Mastermind into. Probably the best figure that you have. Right. It just depends, though, if it's, like, for two damage. Yeah. Or maybe even for, like, three. You might do it. Right, and it's not penetrating. I mean, if you you're probably masterminding non-penetrating damage to her, mm -hmm. but it's it's situational probably. She's a pretty good figure though. The perplex is nice, um, and she is like I said, 19 defense is fairly hard to crack. Right. Uh, then we got Tarn the Uncaring. He's a mystic. He's cosmic energy. 125 points, six range, single target. He does not have movement attack. He starts with ha uh, four clicks of mind control, four clicks of phasing, then a minor click of mind control. He has no attack power up front. How much range? Six. Uh. Single target. He does start with 19 invincible for two clicks, and then 18 invincible. Then he goes to mastermind. Three damage out with, and three damage perplex. And he has a stop click, which is invincible mastermind. When it's first revealed, you regenerate a, a locus. Vile bystander. If Tarn's 125, you may generate two of them instead. Yeah. He has a trait leadership, and then when he uses it and succeeds, he chooses to generate a locus vile. Or the, the what, are, so what do the pogs do? He chooses one. Generate a locus vile or place all locus vile bystanders on the map adjacent to Tarn the Uncaring. So here is the uh, here's the three pogs. Or actually, he has more than that, actually. I'm sorry. He has like five pogs. Amino Fetus, which is a 6 move plasticity, 10 attack, 18 defense, 2 damage, close combat expert, giant. Uh, uh, so this guy's a pool, right? This guy's probably a pool. Right. Uh, he has Hex Butcher, which is a charge, 7 move charge, blade, 16 defense, figure, 10 attack. Right. Mud Gear. No movement attack, but it has uh, four range side, four range ten attack psychic blast with range combat expert. No defense, seventeen. It's one damage, so it's dealing two, eleven for two. Yeah. Uh, Mother Rapture is a poison super senses paw with flight and eight movement. And then the last one is Sick Bird, which is a hypersonic exploit piece. 7, 10, 17, 2. So he makes some decent pogs. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. I like those pogs. Genesis. Ooh, I don't guess I realized Genesis was a super rare in the set. Genesis is a super rare in the set. So if you see your partner or your, your, your uh, player to the left of you pulling a Genesis, do not pass them your war or death. Yes. Do not do that. Right. Genesis is six range double targets, 120. Cosmic energy, half dial charge, and then half dial flurry, half dial precision, half dial psychic blast. That's like last, still energy, excuse me. Half dial of a special defense power, which is combat reflexes, invincible, and super senses. 
Yeah, that's a pool. Right. Yeah. I mean, what's the damage slot? Four clicks of prob followed by four clicks of exploit. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yes. Absolutely a pool. Traded leadership. When she uses it, an opposing character is in range, can use leadership or willpower, increase the result by t- roll the, the results of the roll by two. And when she uses it and succeeds until your next turn, when an opposing character within range uses leadership or willpower, decrease the result by one. Yeah, this is definitely a pool figure. Yeah, absolutely. She has four damage. Yeah. Twelve attack. Definitely won her. Uh, magic. I, I don't know how I feel about magic. She's probably, I, I, I'm probably passing this. All right. She's, Someone was asking about putting the, the cloak on her for, like, constructed. Yeah, that may be but for, your, for battle royal purposes, though. You want somebody that's dealing damage. She's not doing a whole lot of that. Mm. Uh, 45 points, Mystics, X-Men, 5 range. She has a special movement power, which is charge, facing, teleport. When she moves, after resolution, is generate a stepping disc marker in the square she began her movement in. Friendly characters within two squares of the stepping disc marker can use free. Place this character into an, occup- an unoccupied square with a stepping disc marker. In and of your turn, remove all stepping disc markers. Yeah, so probably constructed, but man, she's not your first pick in a BR. You got to have a damage dealer. When she uh, she's eight, she's 10, 11, 18, and two damage during tile down. Right. She has so, leadership. Uh, I would say McConnell asked that question. So I mean, you could give her a sword. Yeah, you give her a sword, but uh, McConnell was asking about the cloak. So I'd say McConnell will probably think about that a little bit more for the set review review. But I would say she's probably a pass in a BR. I think so. She has kind of reflexes toughness. She has a uh, special attack is when she hits a close attack after resolution. She plays a hit target in a square adjacent to her. Yeah, I just don't think I'm taking her in a BR. Right. Agreed. If, if this is my super rare, I'm sad. Right. Uh, Captain Avalon is our next one. He's 65 points for 7 clicks. Full dial charge. He has precision strike and then quake. He is a flyer. So, so far we've only had one TK. Two TKs. Well, top dial TK, right? Just uh, No, we had a traded TK okay. on, I think, on somebody else. Gotcha. Uh, precision strike, invincible, close combat expert. So he's 12 move, 12, he's hitting it for 12 or 4, 18. He has a trait when a friendly character makes a close attack. That character can use toughness until your next turn. And then, okay, he has the same one that was on the other, was on the Captain Britain. Combat reflexes, but then, okay, then he has when the opposing character moves adjacent to Captain Avalon, he's a charge or hypersonic after resolution is dealing them a damage. Gotcha. This guy's a pull. Yeah, that's a pull for sure. Um, then we've got a armor. Get her to come up. Armor. Yeah, we might be uh, going to a bad reception too. I don't know if I'm taking armor either. Alright. Armor 75 points in X-Men zero range. She starts with force blast. That sounded more like a pass to me. Uh blade 17 and fallen. She has two damage uh support up front. But now this she has uh, she has rally five opposing attack rolls when an adjacent feeling character would take damage from an attack. You may remove one of her rally dice. If you do, that character takes no damage from the attack. At resolution, you deal armor and unavoidable damage. Yeah, well, 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 hold on, hold on. Hold All on. right, okay. Uh, she has she has this, she has three clicks of force blast blades in vuln in support. Then she gets to oh, this is the guy. This is, she turns into like a, a big attacker or like right. She has, she goes to charge and then she has special attack. For her last four clicks, it's Blades Claws Fang, Super Strength Quake, 11 attack, and then she goes two clicks of 18, two clicks of 19 with Defend, Energy Shield, Involve. Jason Friendly Characters can use Toughness, and she becomes a Colossal. So, in that case, you really have to see what the person next to you pulled. Right. To see if it's going to be worth it. Yeah. You have to look very quickly to see what you're getting past. Right. She goes to three and four damage, but she's got uh, blades too. Um, she could be real good, but she's not helping you up front. Maybe I could just ignore her. Well, you can't. Potentially, but you could use the rally die to get right. But then it, you're talking your th- 
three turns in potentially the least. Well, I mean, and she can maybe and support's not a bad deal, I guess. Uh, you've got to look and see what you're getting past. Especially, I don't know, if you've only got three actions, you're not using support more than likely. Yeah, probably Leadership not. Leadership is not on a ton of figures. Right. I would say it just, uh, uh, she's very conditional. depends on what you get past. Right. It depends on what's there. Right. Then the next guy. This guy is the most pool of the set. Apocalypse. Right. 145 points, Cosmic Energy, X-Men, TA, 6 range, single target, half dial running shot, and then charge, half dial psychic blast, and still energy, half dial super senses, and then combat reflexes, then a half dial 4 damage with a special power that gives him probability and shape change, and then he goes to close combat, expert after that, he has leadership and invincible traded. And he also has oh, is Invincible Traded? Invincible Traded. Oh, my God. 19 Super Senses up top. Uh, at the beginning of the game, when a, this is a trait, beginning of the game, and when Apocalypse KOs an opposing character, give him a Resurrection Token. Maximum three. When Apocalypse would take damage, you may remove a Resurrection Token to take one unavoidable damage instead. Pull, 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 This guy pull, 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 pull. is nigh invincible. Yeah. In a BR. To right. take out. Yeah. Shape change, super senses, invincible, 19 defense. Now, was it his resurrection thing when he comes, when he just KOs a character? Well, he gets, he, uh, at the beginning of the game, he gets one. Yeah. So he just starts with one. Okay. Every time he KOs somebody, he gets one, but it's maximum three. So you could have three instances. You're definitely going to get one where you can just shrug off a hit and take one. Right. So that's when he would take damage. How many comes to life? Uh, he's eight clicks long. Uh, you're going to get to real shape change of senses before all that happens. So Right. Yeah, and you still got Invincible. So, uh, yeah, this guy is in the month two boosters, so you don't have to worry about him up front. Yeah, but he's definitely a pull. Definitely a pull. Uh, Red Root the Forest. This... Is it better than the main set one? I don't remember all the main set does to compare off the top of my head, but right. I don't think so. He doesn't have any movement attack. He has six clicks of stealth, four clicks of stealth, and three clicks of flurry. He has a special attack. The whole dial uh, incapacitates smoke cloud. When he, when he hits and after resolution, he can use smoke cloud is free, but only to generate three. He gets four clicks of defend and then three of super senses, and he starts with a special damage, probability control. Rendering the force she uses it, she may target character occupying terrain marker generated by her regardless of line of fire. Uh, and she has a special uh, trait, poison, and free to use a terrain marker generated by her the Rendering the Forest. If you do, destroy all blocking terrain adjacent to that marker and deal one penetrating damage to an opposing character adjacent to that marker. This is not a pull for me. Yeah, that sounds like a pass. Yeah. That sounds like a pass for sure. This is a character you build a team around. Not a character that you can build a team around in a BR. BR. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. White Sword. Probably a pull. I you think. know, I do like that some of these characters are not chases from the main set. Mm -hmm. I mean, so folks that maybe are fans of the figures have a little bit better chance of getting a hold of yeah. these figures right. after the three months are over with. Like Apoc or White Sword. Right. Or Genesis. Which is Annihilation. Oh, got it. Okay, it's the same. Genesis is, a, is a, Apocalypse's wife. Oh. Like, which is Annihilation. Yes. That's got to be like a... How does that relationship start? Well, I don't know. She's kind of a badass. Well, she's a bad. I get that, but it's like... Uh, it's like I guess she's got to be like equally like... Like, she's got to believe in the mission, right? Right. Like, she doesn't... You don't marry someone that you don't believe in their mission. I mean, she believed in the mission so much so that her and the horseman children went to Araco and were cut off from... The Earth for however many hundreds of years, or whatever it was. Oh wow, yeah, that's interesting. Like I don't, I just sometimes I don't understand how the big bad gets uh gets married, right? Like, uh, right. is he like winding and dining her? Like, did he bring her flowers on the first date? You don't, you have to think of Apocalypse as a family man, but apparently he was. Right, I guess so. Um, so, so what's uh, what's the White Sword doing? Ninety-five points. You got charge, zero range, one target. 
uh, starts with 11 attack, 18 defense with combo reflexes, invulnerability, super senses, okay. 4 damage, leadership. Alright, I, I think that's a pull. Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, that's probably going to be the strongest piece in your booster. His attack slot is on every click but the first one. It's still energy. Once per turn when he rolls a single D6, after resolutions you may heal him equal to half the result. So if you're rolling for leadership, super senses, super senses, or blades, he can heal himself up. Right. So yeah, definitely take this guy if you pull him. Uh, last super rare, famine. And that's the last piece in the set, right? That's the last piece before we get to the uh, pro prizes. Well, the prizes aren't in the BR. Prizes are not going to be playable in the BR. Right. So we're not probably not going to talk about them today. So we got four range double targets, flyer with charge, then goes to leap climb, special attack power. Oh, she has that same first children trait that the, the horseman, the horseman stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, special attack power, survival of the fittest, it's in cap. Unique modifier, opposing characters within range line of fire, modify their combat values, minus one if they have one or more action tokens. That's interesting. Yeah. That possibly is. Yeah, but, I mean, it's like, uh, it's like well, if, 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 like, Havoc comes in your booster instead of this one. Right. Havoc's threat range is just better. Right. So maybe, like, Havoc's... A, there are certain figures, I think, that are a pool over this one, depending on what's in the booster. Uh, this this character is exploit weakness with four damage, though, 11 attack. At the end of your turn, give an adjacent opposing character an action token. If you can't, you deal him with penetrating damage. All right. I mean, I can see, I can see pulling this. Right. It depends on what else. It depends like, uh, on what the other three figures are. Maybe what sword you got with it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I mean, do we want to go over the swords? Well, so, I don't think that you really get... You don't have a choice with the swords. You just get yeah, what you Yeah, you really get. don't want to... You don't really get um, a choice here. But might I'm be, looking... Might uh, be better for, this, say, for the uh, set right here. Try, yeah, McCon oh, yeah, so McConnell asked that question. George uh, Ong asked about Super Rare Magic with the cloak. We'll probably talk about that with Constructed. Uh, Richard Z, uh, I will say that we recorded this episode. Uh, I set up the laptop and stuff in the truck on the way down to Huntsville because of uh, we weren't able to really answer your question uh, in the last EP. Uh, so McConnell and George, we'll, we'll talk about that in the Constructed portion of the set review. Uh, William Holland asked, what do we think that Apocalypse and Genesis are going to settle with price rise? Uh, 150? At least, I think. I mean, you got to play both of them, right? Um, I think a lot of times. I mean, how widely available are these figures? Right. They're going to be more and more available. And I also think this is one of the less played slops in recent memory. Right. Because I mean, we, had, we didn't even get our, we got two stores local that's going to play the thing, and we didn't get our shipment. So we're we didn't get to play month one yet, so right and so I don't know. I'm, I mean, I'm a bit frustrated about it, but uh, you know, hopefully we get to play it when we I come mean, back. I think they're going to be high at first. Obviously, I guess it depends on how much competitive stuff we have going on in the next few months. Yeah. So after Worlds, I think their value is all going to be determined is if there's November WKOs coming back. Like we talked at length about that in the first, last episode. Um, and um, so, if there's November WKOs, Genesis and APOC are must play. It's because yeah. it's, it's mm -hmm. August, September, October. So, November WKOs should be the first month that this thing is playable. Yeah. So, um, I really hope that we get November WKOs. Let's yeah. let's get it started. I mean, I, and the value stays high in that situation. Out the gate, they're going to be high. I sold this figure for $400. Right. It's going to be high out the gate. Right. No matter what happens, because it's so wanted, like, and there's not that many. Of, I don't think but one comes in each kit. I don't think. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and Garrett, um, I would say on your question there, we're, we're probably going to save some of that stuff for the more constructed episode. We uh, we've done well with no traffic or not, but we're almost to Nashville, so I feel like we're, if we're going to run into traffic, it's going to be here soon. So, um, but Ben, I do want to add a little bit of constructed in here. Do you think Genesis will see play? Yes. Yes. Genesis yeah. is good. Right. Apocalypse gets the hype. Genesis well, they're is both good, good right? So yeah, both they're both really good. Genesis what? is not equally as good. Yeah. So it it because it makes Monster Brute and Warrior Araco, and then Apoc makes Araco X Men, X -Men 
and there's this little guy called Professor X that can swap them out if you want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you absolutely play both of them together. You absolutely having 35 point dials is why you play them. Right. And, and yeah, absolutely. And um, the big deal is Krakoan Revival Sky Tyrant, Krakoan Revival Sakarian Iron Man. That's that, right. It's just absolute. I mean, and like, so like, monster. You know, brute. Um, you're not. You're not playing. I don't think you're playing uh, um, Thanos on an X Men team at this point. But uh, yeah, you, you could. I could. guess it, it, it all fits in with the hundred uh, within three hundred points. If you don't have a Chase A, you might want to think about getting one. Yeah, now. Chase Apocalypse from H O X. Yeah, depending on what all we get. Right. Mm-hmm. On the announcement, of course. Right. But, um... Yeah. If there's no modern big tournaments until sometime middle of next year, it's not worth the pickup. Probably. Right. Chase A's probably not worth picking up. He's going to retire. He's probably going to retire. Like, we don't know that for sure, but probably... More based, than likely. Based yeah. on uh, the past, he's probably going to retire. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Um, I was just going to look at Warrior real quick. And we have I mean, a lot of warriors in the set that could become X Men. Uh, uh, like Legacy Apox of Warrior. Legacy. Oh yeah, the um, yeah the Colossal. Colossal of Warrior. Right, but he can't be revived. So no, he can't be. But it's but pairing him with X Men support is a big deal. And the fact that they have thirty five point lines and they drop a sword. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's just an instant, you can swap out Genesis for Venom Magneto. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, hashtag Dr. Thing, I suppose. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, there's just a lot. Those are the big ones, right, that everyone's talking about, right? It's Thane, uh, uh, not Thanos, but Sakari and Iron Man and Sky Tyrant. You can also swap them out. Um... You know, we're figuring that the Soul Sword gets some sort of errata with the stop clicks, but it may not. So, like, the, those figures are both viable at 300 points with the Soul Sword. Mm-hmm. Um, that's totally a thing. That's would not be upset at anyone for playing that. Um, so, yeah, Ben, you're right. So, short episode... Uh, not really. Our normal episodes are two hours. We're coming up on an hour and 16 minutes, but we are approaching Nashville currently. Um, it's Friday. I'm going to try to get this episode up tomorrow morning before the event. And uh, thanks, everybody, for listening to Click Stuff today. Jason, any final thoughts? Uh, just have fun. You know, if you pull your attacker first, look for the big damage, look for the mobile figures, look for the flyers. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, but thanks, everybody, for listening to Click Stuff today. We'll talk to y'all next time. Later.